Welcome once again. Let's talk about social inclusion. As Lithuanian families spread across borders, well, their relationships are being reshaped, especially among siblings. My guest today, Ima Budginaite Machkine, explores how sibling dynamics are changing in the context of migration, highlighting the gendered expectations of support and the impact of uh, multi-local interactions. So this conversation today with Irma uncovers the unique type of solidarity that emerges from these cross-border family practices. Irma, welcome to our episode. Hello, everyone. Irma, tell us about the overall importance of studying the sibling relationships in your article. So researching sibling relationships uh, is important because these types of relationships are fewer over time. So generally we see verticalization of families uh, all across in Europe, at least. Uh, a number of us have only one sibling or no siblings at all. So that's why these, uh, these relationships are more precious, so to say. And at the same time, we witness uh, the increasing longevity. So we have more elderly people and more mobile people. So how these few familial ties uh, between the siblings uh, can be maintained across the distance and how they can be activated in terms of support for uh, an elderly parent, uh, which can be not so straightforward if you are alone or if your uh, sister or brother is very far away from you. Mm -hmm. um, I read your article and you wrote that sibling relationships were rarely the center of attention of scholars uh, that research family lives, that they usually are overlooked, understudied. So was this the void in research that you wanted to address? Uh, indeed, and that's a void not particular to Lithuania. Uh, mm -hmm. In migration scholarship or transnational families, we usually see uh, children-parent relationship. So it's either a young child remaining in the country of origin and their parent living abroad, or is it the adult child living abroad and the elderly parent back in the country of origin? But then this horizontal ties are kind of invisible, taken for granted, they are just there. And uh, uh, as our siblings are with us for entire life or very long time together, these relationships really matter and how they evolve over time uh, has to be looked into um, individually, but also in research. A promising uh, background. So let us know the most important findings, the insights of your study. Uh, one of the things uh, that the study looked into uh, was what are the support expectations towards uh, siblings, um, depending on the distance uh, between them. And what we can see that siblings are uh, way more important than other kin relations uh, and also non-kin uh, relations. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, if uh, one would need uh, support, parent, uh, father or mother are very important as well for every everyone. But then the next come uh, siblings, particularly if we look in the situations where uh, support is needed when the parents are uh, getting older and their health uh, is not so uh, strong. So uh, they emerge as very important uh, in, in terms of from whom uh, people would expect uh, support. And regardless of the distance, even when siblings live apart, uh, uh, far away, they are still seen as potentially uh, people who could help. Uh, what uh, uh, other important finding is uh, looking at returnees um, to Lithuania. And a number of them reported in the quantitative study that uh, they were uh, they had no siblings themselves. So returning to the country of origin was partly related to their parents' uh, care needs. And if you are alone living abroad, that's kind of a question uh, that uh, more and more Lithuanians will have to ask themselves, either to return or elderly parent to move uh, abroad because uh, the population is aging. Um, uh, in terms of migration patterns. Um, what we also saw that there, there is some detached relationships among uh, siblings. Uh, however, altogether, uh, um, regardless of the distance, relationships remain emotionally uh, close. 
And this new type of solidarity that was discovered when we were doing the topologies of different solidarity dimensions, so support, emotional closeness, similarity of opinions, communication patterns, uh, emerged that uh, people who have migration experience start to feel different uh, from their siblings, but that does not prevent uh, them to still feel close and still live nearby and still uh, choose to return uh, to live uh, with their family of origin. However, we have to recognize that these relationships are already different. They are shaped uh, by migration experiences and there is a gap uh, in, uh, in uh, life choices and what people uh, saw uh, that they cannot reconcile. They feel very, very different in terms of their opinions and, and possibly choices in life. And what are some practical implications and consequences of these findings? Um, the fact that Lithuanians uh, see their siblings as a very important support uh, source um, has uh, policy implications in the long term. Mm -hmm. So as we have fewer and fewer siblings and uh, families will continue unless uh, there are uh, big demographical changes, families will become smaller. So the um, pressures on those who remain or those who were abroad to return to the country will be greater and that may require additional support. Uh, for them and specific schemes uh, allowing the flex flexible movement between the countries, particularly in contexts where we end up in immobility regime, like we had the COVID pandemic and all the borders are closed. So what do you do if you are this sole child living abroad and your father or mother needs uh, support? So there has to be uh, some specific paths foreseen for these emergency situations as well, recognizing that this uh, type of care is maintained sometimes across the borders. Mm -hmm. And for individuals, uh, uh, on the individual level, it may also affect the choices uh, of uh, people in Lithuania, whether to move abroad altogether, if they are uh, the only um, person in their family, or maybe to move together with their parents and so on. So this might uh, result in different migration strategies in the future, uh, having in mind family uh, composition changes. Of course. Coming back to the academic realm of the conversation. So what do we need? What's ahead of us now? More case studies of horizontal relationships, as you mentioned, more art of geography. So what's next? Uh, so uh, indeed, more focus on horizontal ties uh, is the next step. And there are uh, studies over the last few years that are paying more attention to this uh, relationship type. Um, and while our study looked at, uh, at it from quantitative perspective, so we can see what are the patterns of these relationships, but we cannot talk about actual experiences. So next step for us is also to dive into the qualitative uh, data, the life stories that we have. So how actually these things um, are shaped out, what happens uh, in those uh, uh, complex situations. And the other uh, research need would be to um, make sure that we have more longitudinal research mm -hmm. because we have to recognize that uh, and every study, if it's taken once, uh, once, it takes just a picture of that family situation, that particular moment of time. And our relationships evolve uh, over the life course. So we might have very good sibling relationships now, but we may fall out in the future. Mm -hmm. And then that actual need comes much later in life. So if you don't trace these relationships over time, we keep having just a picture, but not a complete uh, movie. So that type of research is really uh, needed and uh, not very uh, um, uh, popular due to uh, financial and timely constraints some tips for um, academic research. Irma, if you had to, this has been a straight on point episode, but if you had to sum your, your conversation in one or two sentences, the punchline of this conversation, what would it be? So increasing uh, global mo mobility uh, will affect our lives, uh, our life choices, and will make our relationships uh, between our siblings uh, different. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, the strongest bond, emotional closeness, and interest in each other's lives will remain. So despite the differences, we can still expect uh, family relationships to remain um, strong. Great episode, Irma. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Sorry for getting stuck a bit. No worries. Uh, for those who are watching us on YouTube, you can find all the resources, uh, all the materials of this conversation uh, on the Let's Talk About Social Inclusion website, including the study that uh, Irma just shared with us. You can also listen to this episode alternatively wherever you get your podcast, and you can subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.